welcome artists to this painting tutorial called Sunlit Windowsill in Soft Pastel. Just look at these beautiful sunlit geraniums. I'm going to be teaching you so many things, including tips for drawing accuracy. Also, in creating soft painterly shadows. Be sure to watch to the end as I add the sunlit highlights on these beautiful geraniums. So welcome into the studio and let's get started. If you are a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will receive the full version of this tutorial. I would love for you to come join my Patreon family. It's only $5 a month, and I get to see your work. It's such a beautiful place. But not to worry, there's plenty of content here on the Monet Cafe channel. November's theme in Monet Cafe and on my Patreon page is windows and window light. I have curated an album from unsplash.com of some beautiful window photography. This will be available for my patrons. This is the photo that I chose for this painting. I did crop it for a bit more pleasing composition. And now let me share my supplies with you. The sheet that you see behind the reference image there is a sheet of Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card. I always say that's a mouthful for the name of a paper or a pastel surface. And I buy the pads like you see here, but you can buy individual sheets. It is a very sanded surface that takes lots of layers. Now it is not water friendly, so I only use soft pastels on this surface, but I love it. It really gives some painterly results. Now it is a little pricey, so keep in mind you can use whatever you have. I have recommendations if you're a beginner pastel artist. You can find many products that I recommend in my Amazon shop. I have this section called Idea Lists, and within that section there's something called Beginner Basics for Pastel Artists. And I have pastel sets that are more affordable and some of the surfaces. This Art Spectrum Color Fix paper is way more affordable than the Sennelier and it's a sanded surface. It allows for a lot of layering, much more affordable per sheet. And another surface, now it's not going to give you as much layering, but if you want just a paper for doing some studies, this Canson XL is also very affordable. And trust me, I couldn't afford the expensive products when I first got started either, so just do your best. You can do it. Here's my setup. I have an empty tray there to add pastels as I work, but I primarily used this set of pastels. It's 120 half stick set of a pastel brand called Schminka. These are very soft, beautiful, uh, great application pastels. They are more expensive. Again, I did not get these until I was way into my pastel career. So again, use what you have. I'm showing you this fan. If you worry about pastel dust, I use a HEPA fan. I turn it around backwards so it sucks in the pastel dust and blows the air out the backside. It really does seem to help. Now, I wanna show you here. How I'm gonna take my reference image and make sure my painting surface is proportionate to the reference image. This is a trick that's really easy. If you have a reference image that's smaller than your painting surface, you can put it in the upper corner, like I've done here, get a straight edge and put it on each corner diagonally, like you see me doing here. Now where the ruler or straight edge lands is make a little mark right where it meets the paper, right when it goes right off the paper. And then I'm just going to measure it and do the same um, measurement up top. And I'm, rather than drawing a line, I'm just gonna put a tape over that little measured area there. Now my painting surface is the same size proportionately as my drawing surface. Now this is very important when you're drawing something perspectively like this. Now I'm showing you this technique that I'm doing here. I don't often use what's called a grid method because I'm often painting landscapes and I've kind of learned how to freehand sketch, but with landscapes, things are not as precise as a building or pots that have ellipses and angles like this. So I knew that the success of this painting is going to have a lot to do with the success of the drawing or the representation of these elements being accurate. So what I did is, I'm just sketching right now, you can watch me as I sketch, but I took my painting surface, divided it into quarters, um, equally, vertically and horizontally. Then I did the same thing on my reference image. I just used a piece of, or a, a pencil that was a pastel white pencil. And now I can basically draw uh, what I see within each square. It's a whole lot easier. You know where things are. I don't love this method in general, but if I've got uh, something that is this precise perspectively, then it's important, like these pots that I'm doing here. Now I am kind of chopping this up and speeding it up a little bit because this took 
quite a while. Look at all these angles and everything. And uh, I do actually use my ruler to get angles. I could see where that windowsill ledge was in the squared sections, and I could really just get the angle pretty much right on. So it was a really great way to get an accurate drawing, which I must say is very important with subject matter like this. Now I did have to tweak things a little bit as I painted. Um, you kind of lose some of your sketch. Uh, I would love how in this image it had those blankets on like a, a little rack for drying in between the buildings. There was so many interesting elements in this. So I'm again going to be providing the cropped reference image for my patrons to use. And I also snapped a shot of my sketch after I was done, if you're my patron, I'm gonna give you a downloadable image of my sketch if you just wanted to kind of work from my sketch. So, um, but getting these pots was important. Getting them accurate was important. Also, it had that, um, you see that line across the pots? There was in the image, it's very dark, an iron bar that went across the pots. Just so you know, I later decided to ditch that. Now, what on earth have I done here? I flipped it upside down. I felt like getting these shadows, sometimes it's easier to do things upside down because you kind of turn your brain off as to what the item is and you only pay attention to what the shapes look like. So it really helped me in sketching in these shadowy shapes and that's a big part of the composition. Here I'm just zooming in and showing the actual sketch and it's accurate but it's not crazy with detail. I just needed my main elements to get started. For the pastel painting portion of this lesson, if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you're going to get my full commentary and slower speeds, but not to worry. Here on the Monet Cafe channel, you're going to see this painting come to life with soft pastel application, and I'm going to give you some commentary too. So here we go with soft pastels. I wanted to start with the shadows, and I also want to show you these colors I chose. Blues and purples are great for shadowy colors rather than just grays. Those are boring, right? So I'm going to get started first with kind of this neutral blue. Uh, I didn't want anything too punchy or saturated in color. And I'm just blocking in the, the sketch that I already did for these shadows. And I'm looking for any area in this reference image that may have a similar value. And I'm just using this. This is called blocking in. It's the stage of pastel painting, <clears throat> actually oil painting, acrylic painting, uh, use the same uh, concept or strategy. Um, and now I'm blocking in um, a little bit of a lighter value where I'm seeing some shadowy areas or some values that are just a little bit lighter than that uh, first blue. And just a quick break, if you've been enjoying this lesson and the other free lessons here on my channel, would you consider buying me a coffee? It's a way you can tip this video. You can find it in this video description. Also, would you just real quickly click that like button? It really helps YouTube to share this lesson. And by all means, subscribe and leave me a comment if you like. All right, let's get back to this. This is a little piece of pipe foam insulation, which you can buy at a hardware store. We don't really need that here in Florida. We don't have to insulate our pipes, really. <laughs> Every so often it freezes here. Um, and so I'm using it to blend. This surface is very textural, and some things won't blend very well on this, but the pipe foam insulation works great. I had just cut a little piece. Um, so now I'm capturing some of the um, building colors and values. Uh, this is a real neutral peach color here. I'm using using it more for uh, to carve into the shadowy areas. Later, you'll see me develop the building, adding a little bit more sunshine and light. So I loved some of these little cooler spaces in the, there's like curtains behind the, uh, the flowers there in the middle. And uh, now I'm getting a beautiful little green. Uh, there were reflections of some green trees in the windows. Um, and I like to use a darker value uh, often to carve into shadowy areas. That's why I use that darker orange color. And this is a beautiful purple that I'm using to go over some of the first blue that I put down. And this is a darker value. I, I've started lately with my pastel painting not going for my darkest values first. Um, I want to share something with you right now. See how I'm creating that bar across the plants there? 
It was actually in the reference image. It's very dark. It's kind of hard to see. And I later chose to lose that bar. Uh, even though in real life, you wouldn't want to sit if you're on a second floor, uh, your geraniums on a ledge where it might they might fall off and hit somebody in the head. <laughs> but uh, I artistically chose to use my license and remove it. This was definitely the fun part, painting these geraniums. And the strategy is similar to what I've talked about in many of my tutorials. I like to work in my darker, shadowy areas. I think about the inside of the flower and you can see with these I'm just adding my middle and lighter values on top of my darker values and it really creates dimension and depth. Uh, so there was a combination of pinks and reds in these flowers, obviously, and uh, they were just real fun. I wanted to keep them gestural, um, but I often say kind of tune out the fact that you're painting flowers or necessarily thinking about all of the detail and just look at basic shapes and values and colors. I chose to lighten up these pots a little bit. Um, again, you'll later see me uh, kind of remove that bar. Um, and, and just so you know, you can do that with pastel painting. I often just use a little stiff bristle brush to uh, brush out areas of pastel and uh, apply more. This surface, by the way, the Sennelier Pastel Le Carte card, it's a little thicker. And again, it doesn't take water, uh, but it's, it's very textural. It takes a lot of layers and it has such a soft and painterly effect. If you like impressionistic results, it's great for that. It's also great for portrait painting or pet portrait painting. Um, so you can see here, I'm developing much of the uh, content behind these geraniums, uh, but I'm trying very hard not to get too detailed there. Our tendency as beginner artists is to paint detail everywhere. And a lot of photographs, I always say, photographs lie, <laughs> um, especially if you just take a basic photo on auto settings, the photo will detail everything. And you have a tendency to go in and want to add detail everywhere. But resist that urge and give more detail to just your, your focal areas of interest. So you'll see that uh, that uh, the, the background elements uh, I don't give much attention to. All right, so the, the greens in the, um, the foliage in the pots, same principle as the flowers, uh, dark values first, gradually adding the middle and lighter values later. And by the way, I know this version is fast. Sometimes I think I love watching uh, paintings come to life fast like this. Um, and I think you can really see it all come together. Uh, but if you would like the slower speed with the commentary, um, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page. Again, it's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. You can also purchase individual lessons. I have most of them available or many of my newer lessons available for only $15. And that's if you, if you just don't like subscriptions. But again, you can cancel the subscription at any time. Um, so this is coming to life now. And I really loved this scene. And that, again, is the theme this month in November in Monet Cafe. And on my Patreon page is Windows and Window Light. Oh, some of my patrons are creating some beautiful pieces. And uh, by the way, it's artists of every level here on this channel and as patrons on my Patreon page. And there was a brief little glimpse of one of the sets that I used for all of these pinks and reds. It, it's the Richeson Hand Rolled Pastels. The set is called Reds, but it has a lot of pinks and reds in it. It's gorgeous. Here's where I'm adding a little bit more of the warmth. I wanted to add like some sunshine. Now that was kind of a mistake. You see the shadow right there where I'm working? You see that uh, I actually kept the bar in the shadow. <laughs> I didn't notice that till later. So uh, I'm going to have to go out and, and again, just kind of uh, remove that. Most people wouldn't notice that, but I remembered that I took the bar away. <laughs> um, so these are just little finishing marks here. Again, this painting was very fun. Uh, I've already uploaded another window painting uh, tutorial on my Patreon page. Oh, and that one was fun too. I actually combined watercolor and soft pastel. It was awesome. Here's where I'm showing these towels on this bar. I loved it as a, as a focal point of interest, kind of a secondary focal point of interest. But I get, again, I like to keep it very subtle, very soft. You don't want the viewer to be bombarded with all this detail everywhere. You want to keep certain little elements as surprises and um, just fun places to go after they're engaged with your main focal point. Here is the final. I was really happy with this painting and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know we're getting close to Thanksgiving, so if you're in the States, I pray your Thanksgiving is beautiful and blessed. As always, God bless and happy painting.